And tonight, Joe Biden has completely and totally, frankly, just humiliated the United States on the world stage. Any confidence the world had in our country um, is now gone. Saigon, circa 1975, steroids. Former Defense Secretary and CIA Director Leon Panetta rightly calling it, yeah, Biden's Bay of Pigs. And thanks to the ill-fated actions of our derelict, low-functioning president, if you want to even say that, that's somewhat charitable, the absolute worst-case scenario has been playing out before our eyes. Biden ignoring the advice and the counsel of his top U.S. military commanders. They wanted the slow evacuation of U.S. troops based on conditions on the ground. He ignored the warnings from our intel on the ground, and now Afghanistan has fallen to the Islamic extremists, the Taliban, in record time. Kabul, oh, they just said last week, oh, it'll be 90 days, uh, the earliest that they'll ever take over Kabul. It was overrun in a matter of hours. Taliban fighters, they are now in control of a massive stockpile. Guess what? Of Joe Biden, U.S. taxpayer paid for weapons, ammo, vehicles, other supplies abandoned during Biden's hasty retreat. He wasn't even smart enough to take our munitions out. Terrorists from al-Qaeda and ISIS, they were freed from multiple prisons all across this country. They soon will be plotting and planning their future terrorist attacks on all of the U.S. and the rest of the world, fomenting terror. The American flag lowered over our embassy beyond humiliating as diplomats hastily were evacuated by helicopter to the airport. The very thing Biden said wouldn't happen. This view of warning, what you're about to see is incredibly graphic, but take a look at this horrific video. Earlier today, thousands of desperate Afghan citizens fleeing certain death at the hands of the Taliban, now rushing to the tarmac of the airport, trying to cling to a departing C-17 military plane. Some crushed under the wheels planes, and others fell from the plane midair, you know, during its ascent, hoping they might be able to hang on and get out of there, dozens of others desperately attempting to board any and all commercial planes parked on the runway. At least seven people died in the chaos. And tonight, as we speak, there are approximately 10,000 Americans that are still at Kabul's international airport, desperately attempting to flee the country. Joe, what are you doing? 6,000 U.S. soldiers now are in the process of re-entering Afghanistan, taken over by the Taliban, to try to now secure the airport to try and save Americans. Without a doubt, a complete, total failure of leadership, planning, and execution. And true to, true to form, as the disaster unfolded over the weekend, Joe Biden was nowhere to be found. Aside from this bizarre photo showing Joe all alone at Camp David, crouching over an empty table during a Zoom call, and we got nothing from Biden all weekend while this was unfolding in real time. His press secretary wasn't available to circle back on anything. Jen Psaki, she was on vacation. If you wrote her, you got an auto reply from her email account reading, I will be out of the office from August the 15th to August the 22nd. Hope you're having a great vacation. The vice president, Kamala Harris, was also MIA. But today, well, finally, Joe Biden comes out of hiding for a very brief scripted speech by his staff before headed back to vacation, where he blamed everyone for this catastrophe but himself, but says the buck stops with him. But I blame him, 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 and him. Take a look. When I came into office, I inherited a deal that President Trump negotiated with the Taliban. The choice I had to make as your president was either to follow through on that agreement or be prepared to go back to fighting the Taliban. So what's happened? Afghanistan political leaders gave up and fled the country. The Afghan military collapsed, sometime without trying to fight. I know there are concerns about why we did not begin evacuating Afghan civilians sooner. Part of the answer is some of the Afghans did not want to leave earlier. I am president of the United States of America, and the buck stops with me.
but I blame everybody else. And by the way, did he have any problem overturning, uh, let's see, President Trump's secure border wall, stay in Mexico? Did he stop building the wall? Trump that stopped catch and release now is Joe Biden's process and release uh, in the middle of a pandemic without vaccine passports, vaccine mandates, mask mandates, and just send people all over the country. Uh, same with energy independence. Yeah, he took us away from that, too. Has no problem changing policies on everything. To recap, Biden blamed the Afghan people, the Afghan military, the Afghan president, the Afghan government, and President Trump when all else fails because laughably claiming that the buck stops with him. Pretty spineless and pretty cowardly. And of course, Biden took zero questions following those remarks. I'm sure he was too exhausted, too much work, spent a whole 20 minutes and immediately returned to his vacation at Camp David for more R&R &R and, and uh, ice cream with sprinkles on it. But let's be honest, this speech would not have happened today if not for the immense blowback from pretty much anyone with half a brain. Even Joe's protectors and the media mob could not ignore the full disaster that this is. Take a look. How does the Biden administration miscalculate this intelligence so gravely. This is a fiasco. This is, uh, you know, a big part of life is execution or implementation. And this is just malpractice. This has just been a, a fiasco by any and every measure. This is not just about the overall idea of leaving Afghanistan. This is about leaving hastily and ineptly. Secretary Blinken, how did President Biden get this so wrong? But Joe Biden is going to be the face of the failure of the withdrawal. If friends and foes alike are calling this withdrawal a fiasco, a debacle, and it is one that apparently the administration did not fully appreciate or see coming. There's no question the White House was wrong about the length of time they had, wrong about the strength of the Afghan military, wrong about the reach of the Taliban. In so many ways, this is completely on uh, President Biden and... To sum up, Joe Biden did everything wrong. Remember, just one month ago, Biden was assuring us that a Taliban takeover was not inevitable at all because they had such a strong army and they had an air force and everything, and there was 300,000 well-trained, some of the best-trained soldiers in the entire world, and only 75,000 Taliban. Uh, no, that's not going to happen. Under no, we won't have to be, you know, taking people out in helicopters at the last minute. We won't have people racing out of there. Wrong again. Is a Taliban takeover of Afghanistan now inevitable? No, it is not. Because you have the Afghan troops have 300,000 well-equipped, as well-equipped as any army in the world, and an air force against something like 75,000 Taliban. It is not inevitable. There's going to be no circumstance where you see people being lifted off the roof of a embassy in the, of the United States from Afghanistan. 300,000 well-equipped, and they have an Air Force. I mean, as good as any military on the face of the earth. The exact opposite happened, Joe. These are the images of people being lifted off the roof of our embassy over the weekend when you said it wouldn't happen. Yeah, you're Saigon, you're Bay of Pigs, and it gets worse. In June, Biden's secretary of state, this guy's a total idiot, Tony Blinken, the guy that sucked up to China and took lectures on human rights from them, as the Chinese are now threatening our military bases day in and day out, they don't say a word. Well, he proclaimed that a quick Taliban takeover was not possible. Yes, it was. Don't we know that now? One, we're not withdrawing. We're staying. Uh, the embassy is staying. Our programs are staying. And uh, whatever happens in Afghanistan, if there is a significant deterioration uh, in security, um, that could well happen. We've discussed this uh, before. Um, I don't think it's going to be something that happens from a Friday to a Monday. Uh, so I wouldn't um, necessarily equate the departure of our forces uh, in July, August, or by early September with some kind of immediate uh, deterioration. Number one, you lied. Number two, people will die. Number three, you armed the Taliban, and you need to be fired, number four. Again, the exact opposite happened. Now, many are calling Biden's ill-planned retreat worse than Saigon. The Biden administration is actually begging the Taliban, please, terrorists, please, please allow Americans to safely leave the country. 
two decades after 9-11. Make no mistake, this is about so much more than just Afghanistan. Uh, the world is watching. Our allies and enemies alike, they are witnessing Joe Biden's pathetic weakness on the world stage. It is humiliating and embarrassing for this country. Now one of China's top newspapers, they're predicting that America will abandon Taiwan, just like they did Afghanistan, and now openly planning a total reunification. Let me interpret that for you, Joe. That means a takeover of Taiwan. And meanwhile, Russian doesn't fear us either with all their cyber attacks. They don't respect us as well. And they're now supplying all the energy for all our Western European allies because you let it happen and you granted him a waiver while simultaneously firing American Keystone XL pipeline uh, workers. Great job, Joe. And after Joe gifted them with a new pipeline, well, the U.S. has now endured a never ending stream of Russian cyber attacks. The, uh, in Iran, we have the mullahs now continuing to enrich uranium at an accelerated pace. Uh, and of course, Joe had the South Koreans give Iran $7 billion, even after Joe attempted to bribe them with more international currency. In Afghanistan, we now have Al Qaeda's safe haven is back. Biden steadily destroying America, standing on the world stage. And now Americans everywhere are less safe and less secure as they plot, plan, and scheme their next 9 11 attack on America. In his book, Obama's Secretary of Defense, Robert Gates wrote that Biden had been wrong on nearly every single major foreign policy and national security issue over the past four decades. Remember, he didn't want to take out. Bin Laden. And according to Politico, Biden's former boss, President Obama, even expressed a similar level of concern, telling a fellow Democrat, quote, don't underestimate Joe's ability to bleep things up. This is the difference, by the way, between Joe Biden and Donald Trump. For all the snowflakes out there that got so, oh, they got the vapors every time Donald Trump set out a mean tweet and everything. Well, they feared Trump. The world fe feared Trump. When Donald Trump gave a threat, they believed him. Biden, they know, is weak and not running the show. The world sees it. They're not influenced by America's media mob and propaganda outlets. America and the world deserves better. The world needs a strong America. Sadly, under our Biden, I fear this is only the beginning and it's only going to get worse.